you care deeply about, and that I do respect. The election this time, I trust, was a disappointment for many of you. Uh, a little bit of perspective from my point of view. I am not the final authority on these things. But if you look at where the Democratic Progressive Party and the loyal opposition to KMT and my NGO was in 2008, and what the outcome of the 2012 election an honest analyst would have to step back and say, this was amazing progress. I believe that that progress was facilitated by very skilled leadership of Tsai ing during that period to help people turn back from a fairly devastating defeat, an end of an era, a period when your previously elected president was put in prison, uh, repeatedly tried, Many, many members of his administration had been detained, uh, had tried, some of them found innocent, but then retried, found innocent again, and then retried, lives completely um, uh, turned upside down. Breathtaking outreach to the mainland uh, that uh, I, as, uh, as just uh, an American policy person, I support having trade with China. I just don't believe that ceding sovereignty is necessary as part of that exchange. Uh, but the government in Taiwan in recent years went further than any previous government, and in fact formed an alliance with one of the most corrupt circles in China, based out of Chongqing. Uh, and many of the cross-strait agreements that were made were actually made in Chongqing, with the people close to a now deposed, disgraced, uh, seemingly rising leader of China. Everyone knows the story of Guo Xilai by now, but I think it has been not recognized enough what large role the people around him played in some of the cross strait developments in recent years. Well, we can step in the right direction. Uh, for people that you support and you care about. But at the same time, I would understand that there is a significant disappointment in falling short in defeating President Ma. Uh, and that uh, that will, uh, that next step in political recovery uh, remains in the future. For me, politics is not a moment. It is an unending journey. And so there are no final defeats, and there are no final victories. There is only the constant struggle to support the issues you care about and defend against them being pushed back by your opponents. And so I don't believe the KMT victories of 2008 or 2012 are permanent any more than the past was permanent, that the martial law was going to be permanent, that the Jiang dynasty was going to be permanent, any of that. So I am optimistic about the future in that regard. But this election uh, that, uh, that you witnessed, that I witnessed, there isn't, a sing there isn't a single person who could say that it was a level playing field. Uh, my grandfather, I deeply respect, it had an enormous impact on my life. He would repeatedly chide me anytime I mentioned the word fair. And he would just look at me and say, there is no such thing as fairness. Now, he said this as the father of 15 children. And in a, in a family with 15 children, there is no equality. There is no fairness. There is only struggle. There is struggle for food, a struggle for space, a struggle so that the older siblings don't pick on the younger siblings. It's, but there, one thing that there is not is fairness or equality. So he would always chide me about saying, well, this isn't fair. Well, of course it's not. But nothing is fair. The question is, what are you going to do about it? What can you do about it? Who can help you do something about it? How do you get, stop, get other people to stop making it harder? Things like that. Trying to change the way I would think about these problems. To me, that's the way this election is. You had an election where America voted. America voted in the form of the White House's disgraceful league at the time Tsai Ing-wen visited Washington, D.C pretending as if it wasn't intervening in a democratic election. But it was open. It was obvious. It was juvenile. 
it was a disgrace. And the people behind it are your enemies. The mistake some of our friends in Taipei have made is that people they think they have met with in D.C. and elsewhere are their friends. They are not. If you understand, as I believe to be the case, that a war has been declared on you, then the people who make it harder for you are not your friends. You do not need to receive them as your friends. In our political system, among Republicans and Democrats, when a very partisan Republican or a very partisan Democrat says something disgusting, insulting, and hurtful to me and my cause, we do not invite them to the 4th of July barbecue. We do not say, this is my good friend. We do not say, this is a distinguished expert that I welcome to come speak to audiences I care about. No, we recognize this person wants to end my political progress. They're not welcome in my home. If they come to my home, I'm going to bring all of my brothers to surround them and make them feel very uncomfortable. <laughs> well, what happens in Taiwan? Taiwan, too much of the time, idiot professors from the United States, forgive me for my language in the church, they come to Taiwan and they are received by the president of the country. They are put in front of a gallery of press and they speak to Taiwan as if it's a group of sheep ready to seek wisdom from the shepherd. And they tell you about democracy. They tell you about reality. I defy you to tell me any professor who's been in a faculty discussion to explain how that is reality. But electoral politics is not. That Life in the United States speaking about Taiwan is more real than life in Taiwan struggling for freedom. Uh, to me, when these kinds of people, whether it's Thomas Friedman, who comes and receives hundreds of thousands of dollars to try to tell you what reality is from his privileged perch in the New York Times, or it's some unknown professor who is famous when he or she visits Taiwan. You need to make these people feel embarrassed for what they are doing, uncomfortable in trying to make your cause harder. You do not need to receive them as if they are some honored guest from afar. Confucius was wrong about this. Sometimes these are not friends who come from afar. <laughs> During the election, there was one very prominent enemy of yours who made a, lot of, no, no, made a lot of news. I think you know his name. I don't need to repeat his name. I don't like his name. Uh, but he was a former official from the United States coming and speaking in a press interview as if he spoke on behalf of the Obama administration, the United States government, or with any authority. Instead, he is just a person at a think tank, at a think tank that doesn't really even influence policy. And but, when he comes to Taiwan, flowers in his hotel suite, an entourage everywhere he goes, and he speaks one sentence, and this wave of media sweeps across your candidate's campaign. And it has a big impact. This needs to change. So, it wasn't a fair election. As my grandfather said, get over it, nothing is fair. What are you going to do about it? The United States did vote in your election. China did vote in your election. There, the way some people were able conveniently to come back to vote, others not. The way that there is un, undisclosed, but nonetheless known, pressure on business owners to make sure that they're not caught supporting causes that would be uh, harmful to their business interests and the mainland. These are the things that make it unfair. But, when it comes down to it, my own diagnosis of why the presidential campaign for uh, the time, uh, Chairwoman and nominee Tsai, did not ultimately succeed, is a more fundamental one in politics. And this is one that all of us who are friends of Taiwan need to help, uh, help overcome. And it comes down to the simple notion 
of the Democratic Progressive Party needing to have an, an alternative plan for Taiwan's development that is viewed by a majority of voters in Taiwan as credible, desirable, uh, and uh, ultimately uh, will take their support away. Uh, in my humble opinion, the political divides in Taiwan about justice and injustice are very, very real. But as a political analyst, I can very clearly analyze that you do not get a majority of vote based on those arguments alone. And if your objective in politics is to win, which is my objective in politics, then that recipe, while not wrong, is not achieving the objective that you see. There has been only one election in Taiwan where the DPP candidate has won a majority, uh, and that was 2004. And if you remember, it wasn't a huge majority. That was a very, very close contest. Uh, and so your objective, the objective of anyone who supports continued democratic freedoms and ultimate self-determination for Taiwan is how do you come up with a development agenda and a political strategy that will get more than that razor-thin majority only once. Uh, remember, in 2000, Chen shui did not have a majority, had a plurality. And ever since, the DPP has not gotten to a majority in the presidential vote uh, with the 2004 exception. So, gone on too long already on, this, on the diagnosis. I need to get to some elements of the prescription. Um, I think that uh, attitudes and observations I have, that a war has been declared on you, the people who are perpetuating the war are succeeding. Something more needs to be done to push back and ultimately take back the gains that they have made. That you need to basically fun chinchu, who's your friend and who's not your friend, and treat them accordingly. Then it comes down to what can you do? In the United States right now, we are not going to change the way U.S. policy is conducted by a beautiful letter being written. Whether it's by Congress to the President, uh, whether it's by a group of us as voters and concerned citizens, the problem we face is not one of people who can't understand right and wrong. The problem is a group of powerful people have decided that we represent an inconvenient truth. And so it's better to hide it. Our weapon must be clarity and the truth. So what do I mean by that? You in Taiwan and in the United States, as you've struggled with these issues, are engaged in a struggle for identity. We in America are always in a, a, a struggle for identity too. Who we are as a country, what our role is in the world, what causes we will support or not intervene or not, what are our core values. We have ongoing contention about what our defining values are as Americans. It is only natural that, uh, that we would have some sympathy for and have common cause with other people around us who have this same kind of struggle in mind. If I, des if I describe for you that there is an election in 2012 where the entire media was largely owned by people who opposed my party, uh, and that a majority of academics and journalistic reporting were going to oppose my ideology and my party, and that money in politics was corrupting and would be used against my party, and that there was some question about the fundamental identity of the sitting president 